So yeah, we gonna dive right on into it. Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna start at 8.05 like I did last time. And this time the whole video will save. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think I can see y'all better. Yes, higher now. Okay, we got a lot to cover. So I brought my notes just to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with just saying again to everybody who is in my live, I want to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking this time out on a Friday night at 8 p.m. to, um, you know, spend with me and ask questions and learn. Um, I'm only doing this every Friday at 8 p.m. right now. It could possibly change once we're not quarantined anymore. But for right now, Friday night seems to be the night. 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time seems to be the time. So um, if y'all have questions, cool. Leave the questions in um, the chat. And I'll try to get to them as much as I can. I really didn't have a lot of questions this last time um, on, my, on my graphic like usual, like I usually do but it's all good we'll just you know wing it and you know discuss a few other things as well um i wanted to also touch on us making sure that we are safe during this time especially people of color please 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 make sure that you are safe and that your family and your elders are protected your children are protected and safe as well if you don't need to go anywhere please don't like just don't even risk it um, we need to try to preserve us as much as we can. Um, and so I went to JD page, Jermaine Dupree page, and uh, of course, Diddy's page. And I just love how they're using their platform to be able to talk about, you know, issues that need to be addressed for us as a community and a collective. So um, I'm hoping that you guys go over to their pages and um, look at all the updates. They recently just did an interview. JD did an interview with um, a doctor who um, is actually trying to get more testing out to our communities. And so, um, you know, definitely check out the video. It was so insightful and so not what I've been seeing um, as I scroll through the news. Not that I'm looking, but, you know, you can't help but to when it's out across social media and um, on the streaming sites, um, on television or, you know, like if because I have Roku, so I stream a lot on there. But you can't help but to see it. It's just all there. And um, I just hope that each and every one of you take this serious about our our safety, our well-being, um, and just making sure, you know, we're sanitizing and keeping clean um, while this is going on. Because this too shall pass. We are going to be okay. But, you know, still, you have to take the necessary precautions for those who may be compromised because of their health or, you know, their age. And so, yeah, just please, 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 please take it serious. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is because I got so much to cover. I got I got some tea on ASCAP. I need to share with y'all. But before I get there, I am going to talk about different royalties. And I'm only going to talk about the top five because there are a lot of royalties that are generated. Some of, some of you may or may not know that although I am a multi-platinum Grammy nominated songwriter, I'm also a publishing administrator and I administrate a lot of catalogs for clients that may have unclaimed royalties that they did not know were out there. Um, and I also help with licensing um, and clearances for um, the writer, our writers who do have those opportunities that come about or maybe, you know, we're trying to get songs cleared for a particular project. And so my company is called The Mezzo Agency and you can look it up. It's in my bio on my IG if you want to get more information about it or if you have an album that's coming out and you just want to make sure you have everything set up properly or if you think you may have <clears throat> maybe you got a place in a while back and you really didn't understand the business and so you're just trying to get a grip because now you know or you heard there's some royalties out there or maybe the album went platinum and you only getting a BMI check or ASCAP check there are way more royalties out there for you than just uh, your performance royalties from BMI or ASCAP so I'm going to talk about that first um, and answer that question because that was the first question that came in um, and the question was, what are the different types of royalties that songwriters and producers can collect? And so um, the first royalty I want to talk about is your print royalties. Print royalties are few and far in between, right? But print royalties are generated anytime a song is actually printed out as a composition, like for sheet music. 
Um, also, if a song is printed out for lyric sheets or like song books, and those are usually paid directly from the printing company to the publisher. And then from there, the publisher pays out the songwriter and producer um, of that actual work. So it's a great way for um, songwriters and producers to have extra money coming in. I've looked at my statements and be like, oh, wow, this was printed. This sheet music for Falling Out was printed like, you know, 80 times. You know, who would have known? But um, it is an, it's a royalty that is generated. And as a songwriter and a producer, you are owed that money. Um, the next royalties I want to talk about are print, I mean, performance royalties. So performance royalties um, are exactly what I was just mentioning. Um, they're paid out by a performance rights organization like BMI or ASCAP or CSAC. And we'll just stay focused on uh, BMI and ASCAP for right now because CSAC has, you know, their membership differences or whatever and how they actually acquire writers and producers. But performance royalties are basically those songs that are publicly performed. So if you wrote a song and or if you are a, a fan of songs and you are riding in your car, and you got your music on the radio, that song is generating a public performance royalty. If you are in the mall shopping at your favorite store and you hear one of your favorite songs come on, that song being played is generating a performance royalty that is owed to the composers of that song, the producer and the songwriter. Um, if you are in a gym and you're working out and they have, you know, the whole sound system wired and, you know, they're playing all the songs that are probably already curated specifically for that gym or that branch of gyms. Because, you know, like Lifetime Fitness, they may have, you know, their own curation um, or a license with the company who curates all of these different songs. Those songs, every time they're played in all of these gyms, shopping malls, stores, grocery stores, bars, um, is generating a public performance royalty that is then paid out to the songwriter and producer um, and the publisher. And so uh, another way that public performance royalties are generated also is through live performance. So when your favorite artist goes on tour and they're performing all of the songs that you love, whoever wrote those songs actually they actually get a performance royalty um, off of those songs performed. Now, it does depend on if you have um, radio stations that are, you know, actually set up to pay out licenses. So you may have some community radio stations, some college radio stations that not necessarily do they pay out those type of royalties because they could be considered like a nonprofit in some ways because it's, you know, student funded. Um, you may have different smaller entities that don't pay out royalties. And there's not a sheriff walking around in the bars trying to make sure that um, public performance royalties uh, uh, licenses are being uh, issued and, and that, that these clubs and bars are, are paying their licenses so that uh, writers and producers get paid. So you almost just have to pray <laughs> that they are reporting the songs that they play in these bars and the clubs. But um, primarily, honestly, those public performance royalties do come in a lot from more of your retail stores uh, who already have, like I said, a curated playlist that they have purchased as a license to be able to play those songs. Um, in addition to, um, let me see, yeah, in addition to like gyms and stuff like, you know, real commercial oriented places where people are actually going and spending their money. That's usually where those public performance royalties are and then on tour. So I know one of my writer friends, every time an artist that he's written for goes on tour, that's exciting for him because he's like, oh, my God, the song is going to be performed 48 times. You know what I'm saying? But that is going to turn into a royalty for him. So it's just always good um, to know those things. So that's your performance royalty. And like I said, ASCAP and BMI and CSEC pay those. Um, the next royalty I want to talk about is your mechanical royalties. Some of you may be very familiar with mechanical royalties. They were like the very first type of royalties being that um, it's when, some, when the song is mechanically reproduced. So back in the day, in order for the vinyl to be created, it was a mechanical task that had to uh, be performed so that you could have a vinyl and then it turned into CDs. And so now we are at a digital download uh, era 
and uh, even ringtones now are considered, uh, they generate a mechanical royalty as well. So the new digital downloads, um, ringtones, as well as online streaming. So if your song is streaming on Spotify, it is it's a portion of the royalty is a, a mechanical royalty. Uh, the statutory mechanical rate right now is 9.1 cents. Um, that is payable to the writer, uh, which is including the writer or the producer. When I say writers, I mean both, you know, writer and producer, as well as the publisher, okay? And, um, you know, these days it differs with all these different streaming providers, but I will say the more your music is actually being streamed everywhere, the more likelihood you will have success of being able to see and reap, in, reap the benefits of having those royalties uh, collected. Um, but a lot of different companies have their own process of how they pay out royalties and, and those different pay rates. Usually the publisher is collecting the royalty on behalf of the writer um, and paying out to the writer. Or you may have like a third party distribution company like your distro kid, your CD baby, your um, what's the other one, TuneCore. They also collect as well. So um, that is your mechanical royalty. And I don't know when the last time anybody bought a CD, but you know, those days are kind of over. So we're not generating mechanical royalties from CDs anymore. Like we, like it used to be, that money was good. Um, the next royalty I'm going to talk about, I have two more left and then we'll be on to the next question. Um, the next royalty is the micro sync royalties. I ain't gonna lie. I like these royalties. And let me tell you why, because with YouTube, <laughs> Um, YouTube has been like the primary and probably like the most, they pay out the most amount of money out of all the different royalty sources that, uh, that we collect from, for my writers. And it's amazing, but you know, their system is a little bit different because you have, you know, MicroSync is basically, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of UGC, but it, it basically means user generated content. So basically in order for that content to be produced it has to be aggregated by the actual user of the platform so because we can actually go to youtube and upload our content and upload our songs upload our videos same with tiktok same with triller same with um vimeo you know just those different type of platforms where you as a user can update and upload those those generate those are called user generated content platforms and they generate a micro sync royalty um and with youtube the payout is, is is three ways you have the visual payout you have the audio payout and then you have the composition um payout which goes to the writer and the the producer or pub, you know publisher as well because the writer would be considered a producer or writer and then the publisher um but on the visual side that's usually you know being covered and uh pay being paid to the actual record uh, company um and and so and, and you have those different those three payouts that are coming in so nine times out of ten it's going to scale and more depending on how many views you have now you can't just you can't be out here having like 1,300 YouTube video, I mean YouTube views thinking you're going to get paid a whole bunch of money. I'm talking about 1 million views and up. You know, that's when you'll start really, really seeing some money from from YouTube. And um, there are also ways where we can actually track and trace those videos every time somebody uploads them or uh, uses them as a cover. Like if, if, some, if someone records your song, and if you just have all these people re-recording the same song over and over, the producer and songwriter and publisher is still entitled to royalties. And so that's what's so great because YouTube, everybody is on YouTube. So you have way more of a bigger pool to pull royalties from. And I, I just love it. I think YouTube is an excellent way that the rates are low. They're not like extremely um high as much as title pays out but you got to think about the pool of listeners and um and, and and viewers who are on youtube that are just listening to their their songs their playlists that they've created or they're actually watching video content and so it just makes for a great opportunity if you do have a song or an album that is generating a lot of views um, um and, and and you have people that are uploading it on their page as well the technology out there now is that all that can be connected and traced. And so it's beneficial to the songwriter and producer uh, whenever uh, they're generating a lot of royalties online. So that is micro sync royalties. Um, my next royalties are something that 
I'm telling you can be your saving grace because they can continue forever. Um, and as long as people are uh, requesting to use your song in the TV, commercial, film, um, it, it, it really can pay out. Even if your song is not popular anymore as it was and was you know, not playing on the radio or not streaming as much. But I'm talking about your traditional sync licenses um, and those sync fees. So basically when sync licenses uh, requests come in, those requests will come in and say, hey, you know, we are wanting to use this particular song that's in y'all's catalog. We would love to use it on this particular show. So I just recently cleared a license for America's Got Talent. And so when that license came in, it gave all of the specs and, um, you know, what they were requesting and how much they wanted to pay for that particular license. Of course, I had to go back to my client, uh, speak to her attorney and really, you know, go through the paperwork to make sure that the fees that they were proposing made sense for how long the song, the, the show was actually going to run um, as a full season, how many times they were going to do reruns, um, replays. And then in addition to that, how long were they going to play the song during the time that she would be on the actual show? And so once we got all of that covered and cleared, then the fee gets paid to the actual writer and as well as the publisher. Once that fee is collected and then the show airs, another side is the actual sync royalties and that is the performance royalties going on back up to BMI and ASCAP. Those performance royalties are then um, accrued off of the song being played on television. Um, and even if they have reruns and they play it over and over again, or even if it ends up on YouTube as an episode and it gets played, there's a royalty that's being generated. And so that one particular show can really, really bring in some royalties if the video is popular and if the show is popular on television. And so, um, you know, those royalties, like I said, are due to the songwriter and the producer and publisher, and they're also paid out by BMI. All right. So I hope that helps you guys understand kind of like the basic royalties that are the most popular, the most known. There are a lot of different other royalties out there, like theatrical royalties and so forth. But um, those are specifically your, your top five that you're looking at to collect. All right any questions let me see what we got let me do some shout outs while i got questions coming in hi yana mac what's up cuz i see my cuz in the building what's up pa i think i shouted you out already destiny yeah who's this stephanie okay what's up jack i see you oh no oh my god okay i'm back i'm back all right Somebody left me a message in my inbox concerning the music business. Okay, cool. I'll check it. What's up, Earl? Team Labs in the building. All right. Joseph A. Parker, I see you with Royalty Exchange. What up? All right, cool. Well, y'all quiet. I don't see no questions. What's up, Simone? Hey, girl. <laughs> Thank you, E. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What books do I recommend for young artists trying to learn the business side of producing and writing? Ooh, um, I, I have one on me, on my shelf. Hold on. And I do a lot of audio books too, um, because I'm always around traveling in my car or I like cleaning up. I'm not really like a person that like to see. I, I, I can read books, but I have to be so locked in and I'm really into like more spiritual books and like self-help stuff and all that stuff. I'm into meditation and all that type of stuff. But there are some good books out there. One of them is called The Business of Urban Music. Um, this is actually written by my mentor, attorney James Walker. He's actually based out here in Atlanta. Um, but yeah, so the name of his book is The Business of Urban Music, A Practical Guide to Achieving Success in the Industry from Gospel to Funk, R&B and Hip Hop. And one thing I love about this book is that he educates you, but at the same time, he gives you like real stories and testaments, testimonies from people who are actually in the industry. So it's almost like he went and had interviews with each of the celebrities or the artists or the producer songwriters that are in here. And they gave their actual play by play of their experiences and 
what actually happened in their situations. Um, it created a lot of color for me. I'm a visual person, so it was really good to go through this book and learn in that way. Um, but then you also have, let me go to my Audible real quick. Um, there's so many books. Oh my God. Everything you need to know about the music business. That's another one. I think that's everybody's go-to. Everything you need to know about the music business. Um, what else? Saved all my lists of books. Um, the Art of Music Publishing, definitely a good book. Um, I would just say go on to Amazon and do a search on uh, everything you need to know about the music business. They have updated versions. I cannot, the, the name of the author is like on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember his name, but he's widely popular. And I actually have his book, but it's, I think it's in storage with the rest of my stuff. But, um, but it will pull up a whole plethora of other books. And then you can just look at the reviews. But I would say start with the basics first. Get something very basic and broken down. But also there are tons of videos online. Um, and then Song Trust is a great resource. I love Song Trust and their whole entire movement with what they've done with kind of simplifying music publishing for a lot of new writers and producers. And so I would strongly suggest y'all go to their um, website and sign up for their actual publishing crash course that they have. Um, and then um, if you decide to join, you got a pen and pad on you and you decide to join, I'll give you a discount real quick to save you 20% on sign up if you have music out there um, that you want to start collecting royalties on. Uh, that coupon code is STAR, S-T-A-R with a capital S, and FACTORY, F. A C T O R Y with the capital F, Star Factory. And that'll save you $20 on sign up. However, their blog and all of their educational content is completely free. So um, I would sign up for one of their crash courses just to learn the business and definitely um, everything you need to know about the music business. That book, start with that one first. Um, specifically, if he's just trying to learn the basics of music and not a specific area like distribution publishing you know all of those are different areas of the music business um including marketing promotion um and so forth all right what is the best way to find a music supervisor looking to place music um i talked about this last week on the live first things first is you need to be prepared before you just start finding a music supervisor to place your music i would like really strongly you suggest i strongly suggest that you go to my youtube channel um and type in music licensing comma tammy latrell i do an actual breakdown as if i am a songwriter that knows nothing about nothing about music licensing and i speak with a music supervisor i interview she's actually a dear friend of mine and we literally break down the process of preparing your music prior to you going to get it licensed because the issue is you know, if I just tell you, oh, well, you go do this and do that, and then you don't have yourself prepared, it's kind of like, it's not going to benefit you in any kind of way. I would want to be able to push you in that direction, knowing that you are prepared and ready to pitch. And so right now, I would say watch that video first and get the basics of what you need to prepare for from your conversation, from your splits to um, your, well, your conversation is your approach, like I talked about last week. So your split information making sure that you have different versions of the songs she she talks about all of that and also um like i said how to approach these music supervisors and where to find them so all of that information is on there watch that video on my youtube channel my youtube is youtube.com forward slash tammy latrell t-a-m-i-l-a-t-r-e-l-l -L. all right next question what companies do artists align with to give them a real-time count of their radio plays um bds does that um they uh, assist you with finding out how many spins, like if you ever hear a BDS report, um, that is going to give you information on how many plays um, you are getting with your um, from your song. That's how they actually track who's doing well in different markets is through that actual platform. If you're a writer who doesn't sing, how much should you pay someone for a reference track? Oh, we talked about that last week too. Um, you know, 
if they're really good and they can turn a record around, you know, within two, maybe three, maybe four hours, it just depends on how quick they are. Um, I would say do a work for hire for like $250, $300, you know, maybe a hundred an hour. Um, and then, you know, you, you're paying for the studio time too. So by all means, if you can negotiate, negotiate down, but you know, I do believe in paying people what they're worth. And so you just kind of need to make that determination based on how quick they work and how good they are with demo records. And actually, um, if they're real performers, you know, it's one thing to be a demo singer um, who just actually demos it the way you're the way you um, the way you performed it in the way that they heard it from you. But it's another thing to have a demo singer who can actually bring it to life and perform it. And so I would say identify people who are real performers, who actually are your live performers that are, you know, they have some weight that can really move fast and they can kind of add their own flavor without doing too much. You know, um, they definitely need to be open to being vocally produced because you may not need a whole bunch of, you know, some people like to run all over the place. Every record don't need to run. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to run on everything. But, you know, is the record being performed to where once we pitch it, it's it's believable. You know what I'm saying? And so I would consider making sure you have someone that can do a, a mix of both and that and let that be your determining factor on, you know, how much you pay. I paid someone up to about five hundred dollars to to cut just because they're just that good. We were out there in like two and a half hours in and out. And I knew I was going to have quality plus that they did incredible harmonies and arrangements. It was just worth it. And she sounded just like Brandy. Um majority are quarterly uh, quarterly payouts would you agree yes majority of royalties are scheduled on quarterly payouts that's kind of industry standard um now the royalties that you get from your publishing companies if you are a major publisher usually come twice a year so if you're signed to a major company you're an established songwriter like sony atv i'm signed with them they pay out twice a year um and then um but you know like your performance rights organizations like ASCAP and BMI their systems is just based on quarters all right hey girl hope you and your daughter are staying safe during this time hey Simone yes girl we doing fine I hope you're doing well all right um who else Donald Passman thank you Mike Tyler Okay, somebody said what? I don't know what you said what to, but okay. Other than PROs, are there companies we can get involved with to track and report music being used to royalty owners? Um, are you saying? Are you saying you're just trying to track more royalties? Where trying to find out where your royalties are outside of PROs? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's the case, just join SongTrust. SongTrust can do that and uh, use that code I was telling you about to save money, Star Factory, with the capital S, capital F. Do I need a contract or a written agreement with an artist I am collaborating with in addition to a split sheet? Um, usually, if you are about to put out the project, you are the owner of the sound recording. So if you're an indie writer, I mean, an indie artist, and you happen to be putting out the project on your own, you definitely want to get a licensing agreement um, that explains um sometimes if you're the songwriter too you can do even do a collaboration agreement that basically says that you know you are uh you and that writer or you and that producer are in agreement that y'all have collaborated on that particular song or songs for this particular album on this particular date or this release date um and uh they are going to be entitled to compensation and or you know, uh, royalties. Usually if they're just gonna be entitled to compensation compensation and no royalties on the back end, that's like a work for hire agreement, right? And that just is them accepting the fee in exchange for their, their lyrics, you know, their production, whatever it is that y'all agree to. But I strongly suggest if you have anyone that's coming in and collaborating with you on a project, pay them they publishing, like, it's easy. Just get their information and hopefully they are signed up with the PRO. So if you're in this room, you're a writer or producer, please make sure you are signed up with the PRO um, so that anytime someone asks you, you know, for your split information, you can actually um, you have an account that collects your royalties for you, which would be your um, your PRO. Um, is a split sheet good by itself? Split sheets are great. Split sheets basically. Oh, yeah, I like that E. It does depend on how in-depth the demo is also. True, yeah. Going back to the demo singers, great point. 
um is a split sheet good by itself so split sheets are it's, it's just proof of doc, proof of documentation in a tangible form that you are claiming ownership for a particular portion of your contribution and so are the rest of the producers and songwriters that are involved in that song um it is not a legal document that basically says that that enforces a contract it's just it's just an agreement that oh excuse me i'm spitting <laughs> i need some water <laughs> but um but it's just basically an agreement that is um that that you guys sign off on saying that we agree to this split this is how much i own and this is how much you own um a lot of record labels collect that during the process of the albums coming out and they do white sheets and all that kind of stuff um but i would strongly suggest that if you are a smaller indie label um or indie artist and you're kind of putting out your own thing acting as an indie label or if you're just an independent songwriter and producer just trying to establish um yourself and trying to you know get your songs heard split sheets are very important to have um there's also an app that i am um, equity holder in called the labs i believe in it strongly you can look at my bio and actually click the link but we're coming out with a uh, 2.0 at the end of may and it is a all-in-one workspace where i work in and i'm actually able to import my songs and invite the collaborators in who want to write the songs with me so i may invite the producer in he's going to drop the track i'm going to invite the other songwriters in we all collaborate in that one workspace we have lyric drop and drag features in there. And while we're contributing our lyrics, it's automatic, automatically appropriating our splits. Um, that is an option to use, but it definitely helps when you and songwriters may be you know, in different states, um, different cities collaborating, and you just don't wanna have that awkward conversation while you're in the middle of creating. It kind of already does it for you. Um, and um, at the end, when the song is done and you've uploaded the song, then y'all can go to the registration process and it kind of walks you through saying, you know, these are the splits based on contribution that each of you are due. Do you agree, not agree? And, and you can just negotiate from there. And once you finalize it, then everyone gets sent a split sheet electronically. And so I think it's just a great uh, app platform that I strongly, strongly, strongly am behind and support. Um, and we have a lot of great things coming down a pipeline. It does so much from like the storage to you know, um, being able to track everything that was done, everything that was removed, anything that was added, it tracks every little thing. And it's such a secure workspace for writers and producers and even um, film producers and script writers as well, because we're branching off into that area too. So the name of the platform is called The Labs, T-H-E-L-A-B-Z. And you can look in my bio and uh, click on over there to get more information what's the best way to market myself as a producer um so i didn't really come to talk about marketing today um i do have my background in marketing but i'll just give you some quick tidbits number one you have the internet you have ig all of these different platforms for producers to showcase your talent so if i go to your page right now and i don't see anything about you being a producer um, I don't see, I don't, I don't hear any of your music. You're not going live sometime and posting your vids like Timbaland does. I mean, like most producers who are popular, you know, they are promoting themselves. And I would strongly suggest that you utilize free tools such as social media, number one, to be able to um, get your name out there, you know, and just try to collab with other people. If you know you have a hometown producer, indie artist, a uh, songwriter, uh, anybody that you can collab with that has a bit of a buzz or maybe they up and coming artists, you may want to align yourself with them and see about producing for them. And, you know, you guys just shout out each other and support each other as a collective, you know, um, relationship building. So I would say that to market yourself as a producer, you can also follow Kato, the producer, K-A-T-O, the producer. That's my homie. He gives a lot of insightful information on all spectrums for producers. So definitely follow him. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to also align you with some resources. Um, let's see. Where can up and coming producers post their tracks for sale? Um is b star still up y'all i think b stars is the is the um is the place where everybody has been going but i do know there are tons out there so maybe you want to google like um sell sell my tracks 
and see if you put in those keywords what actual what actually will come up but i'm not a producer so i you know i don't actually compose music so i i know where songwriters can go but you probably want to do some searching on google to find out uh e dawkins don't scare an artist away from a song by doing too much exactly all them runs and stuff not needed all the time sometimes you know keeping it simple is the best way less is more the majors are about to start paying quarterly. That's good. Okay. They should anyway. Having us wait six months. That's crazy. What's up, uh, J J1? I see you, Amber. Deshaun, I see you. Talk about splits up front. Yeah, you can. If if you know, if you can if you can have the conversation up front, I do. I'm very upfront. I'd be like, so, um, so do y'all usually take care of split sheets and stuff? You know, do y'all do that during the session or do y'all have anybody like an administrator that's going to be helping with the paperwork? Um, because after we finish the session, I'll go ahead and get that paperwork over to you guys. I just kind of need to know how y'all would like to do it. You know, um, this is a part of your craft. So unfortunately, you know, sometimes, especially younger producers and songwriters who are going into rooms where they're bigger people who may be well established and kind of already you know have a name for themselves it's kind of like you don't want to go in and be like yeah you know so i just want to make sure i'm gonna get paid you know because you so really caught up on the opportunity you don't want to rock the boat and make things un awkward and uncomfortable and i talked about approach last week and so it's very important that you understand your approach um of how to go in and ask for your splits but by all means, whether they're a major songwriter, producer, artist, you are entitled if you have contributed anything from lyrics. I don't care if it's two lines, you know, get paid for your two lines, you know, and um, and, and you just have to have you have to get in this business of music. You have to get comfortable with having uncomfortable conversations, period. If you are trying to have a business and you're trying to have a sustainable business, you cannot be intimidated by the money and the opportunity to get money. Scare money don't make money, period. And so I hope you guys really understand that in this process when you're going into it, it's not to say that you can't be your creative self. You don't have to walk around just always thinking somebody out to get you, but you still want to make sure that you are going in aware that yes i'm here i'm gonna write a dope song with you we're gonna collaborate we're gonna have fun we're gonna eat our best snacks we're gonna jam to our best music come up with these ideas and these concepts we're gonna vibe out but at the end of the day before i leave out this studio i need to make sure that the business is straight so that when i go home i can sleep good period if someone pays a producer to produce a song for them does that producer still have the right to claim publishing on that particular song absolutely if it's not a work for hire agreement absolutely they the the fee that you paid is just to license that record for however long they're allowing you to hold on to that record um now if you're buying it outright then that must mean that your fee is pretty substantial it's gonna be high because usually you're doing almost like a work for hire where you're paying them outright to own all of the ownership for the record. So if you have that type of an agreement, then in most most, you know, uh, companies do that. A lot of indie labels do that as well. They'll go ahead and just pay a producer outright and claim all of the ownership. That way they have the rights to control the master and everything. Um, but this this day and age with labels when they pay producer fees they do those advances those are advances on their royalties that upfront fee is just an advance on their royalties that they'll be getting off of the song when the publishing and the statutory mechanical royalties start coming in the sound recording royalties start coming in all right let me see what else we got um i did a song okay violent content bc i did a song with an r&b artist on my hook she has yet to sign a split sheet agreement and has procrastinated when I remind her to do so. How can I still release the song without her causing a legal late? Um, did she actually write it? I need you to let me know. Did she actually write the hook? If she sung, it says, I did a song with an R&B artist on my hook. Did she write it? Because if she didn't write it, then she doesn't need to sign a split sheet. If you just got her on there to sing and she was just, a, you know, she just sung it, then she's just 
she's just a, a, a like a demo singer or a featured artist she's not necessarily entitled to publishing from a split now she would be entitled to a sound recording royalty uh and that would go through sound exchange so i need you to be more specific okay mike beats he said b stars okay cool all right legal problems later ayana b stars.com everybody's saying b stars okay me too up front yes do you know where we can find a good template of a split sheet okay so this is what i want y'all to do go to my bio and it says become a vip right uh, become a writer's block vip um join my group and what i'll do is i will send out a template today is uh, tomorrow saturday i'll send out a template tomorrow of just a basic uh template form it's just a document that you guys can print out and have but please sign up for the labs like ain't nobody printing out split sheets now everybody doing everything electronically um through their apps and through their platforms so um go to the labs.com it's also in my bio join sign up for the free plan until you decide that you you know want to go ahead and uh and pay for the pro plan which gives you it unlocks so many different features and get get your split sheets done that way uh thank you ayana thank you e I love you so much, Tammy. You're always speaking the truth. Oh, thank you. The truth will set you free, honey. Your gift is valuable. Split sheets and contracts help protect it. Absolutely. Scared money don't make money. That's real. What are you working on? How can we support you? So what I'm working on right now is I'm just building up my content. Uh, I have a course that I am going to be dropping um, probably at the end of May. But I'm also studying a lot um, and just really, really understanding how the business works. In addition to that, like I said, I set up and uh, really, it's already launched. It ain't set up. I, I literally launched my own publishing administration company last year um, on December 5th, 2018. So this past December made a year called the Mezzo Agency. And what I do is I assist songwriters and producers in indie labels um, with making sure that their uh, publishing administration is taken care of. It's a seamless process. Um, we have a very professional boutique team, but we are all on top of our licenses. Our clients are happy they're getting paid quarterly and on time, direct deposit. Um, we're handling royalty statements as well as making sure the uh, song songs get cleared when they come through. Um, and then even with indie labels who just, you know, they want to focus more on marketing and shooting videos and maintaining you know what they need to do to build up their artists they're not really worried about splits and publishing and putting together catalogs we handle all the catalog management and that sort of thing so um, i'm really happy about it i'm excited uh every day i wake up i'm like wow i literally got this going on like it was just a vision that god gave me it was a manifestation not only that i gotta get spirit spiritual with y'all real quick in 2018 i was going through a really really uh rough year of just transition and understanding like i had i had been in corporate america for like eight years and i decided that i wanted to be an entrepreneur and just focus back on the music industry full time but it wasn't necessarily that i wanted to be a songwriter uh full time because i had so much more that i wanted to do like helping songwriters and producers i had been doing all these workshops and just traveling to different universities i spoke at my alma mater i spoke at the law school i spoke at so many different places and i was like you know god i, I really see what you're doing like i'm really good at you know really helping and educating people so it wasn't that i just wanted to just run away and leave corporate and just be in a studio i really wanted to create a platform that would allow me to educate and inspire and at the same time, teach what I'm very passionate about, which is making sure I get paid, making sure writers get paid, making sure creators are protected. Um, as some of you may or may not know, but my introduction into the music business, I was 17 years old and found out that Whitney Houston had my song and was performing it. It was already on the radio and I was in my college dorm when my mom called me and said, Whitney Houston is on the radio singing your song. That was my introduction into the business. I didn't have time to prep. Nobody called me and said, hey, we're going to put you in a biz as a songwriter and you got some dope material and I'm going to get you with this person and that person. No, it was I was an artist. I was a college freshman and I found out she had my song because I had actually left the indie label that I was signed with. And so they sold the song to her, but they didn't know that I actually own the copyright. 
So because I own the copyright, that is the reason why to this day I'm still getting royalties off of that song. Okay. And and with that, it allowed me to meet my whole other family once I got signed to EMI from off of that song. So that's Whitney Houston saved my life. She changed my life because even though I never got a chance to meet her, had she not chose that song, obviously she felt something when she heard it and was like, I identify with this. I want this song. They didn't know who I was. Arista didn't know who I was. So they were like, who is this young girl claiming this copyright? You know, uh, talking about she owned a copyright to this song. We don't know who she is. You know, she's a kid, you know, and I was. But I still had my business lined up and in order. And I just knew that, you know, if you're going to be doing music, you need to protect yourself. And 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 so I left the label, but I, copy, I had copywritten all the songs. And I just started college, you know. And so that was my intro. And I just want to prevent as many people as I as I can possibly manage to help from going down that road of just not being aware because I was just a creator I just like singing and songwriting but I really didn't understand the concept of it I just knew that it was what I enjoyed to do I enjoyed doing and so now come 2018 I'm out of corporate America now and I'm still trying to figure out what is it that I want to do and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I know that I love teaching all about publishing and I know how to go and collect royalties for people. So let me just focus on building that. And then I had a dream. And this is so real, y'all. I dream a lot. My dad came to me in a dream and passed me a baton and it had publishing written on a baton. He said, that's what you need to be working, working, working on. That's what you need to be focused on. And I was actually sitting at a boardroom table, like in front of a whole bunch of contracts. And he just walked up to me, just appeared, walked up to me and gave me the baton. And I looked down on it. It said publishing. He said, that's what you need to be focused on. And I woke up and I called him and he was like, let's go. Let's do it. And so um, he actually gave me my first client. Um, actually, he was my second client. Wow, it's amazing how that happened. But um, he gave me my second client, which is the late Reverend Paul Jones, who has the uh, the hit gospel hymnal, I Won't Complain, um, Tyler Perry. We actually cleared it to be in Tyler Perry's last uh, movie, Medea's uh, Family Funeral, or a Medea Funeral. And, um, and, and y'all, everybody know I won't complain. So anyway, we administered that catalog and make sure that the estate, Paul's estate, um, is taken care of every quarter and you know we're always licensing and clearing songs um, and and shows actually that are using his song we actually have a um, PBS special that's going to be coming out too um, with that song in there that's going to be featured do you believe location has a lot to do with getting into the songwriting business um with the internet no um with access yes uh, that's a good question Kaya Alexandria that is a good question. With the internet, no. I think the internet brings us closer. We are no longer divided by six degrees anymore. We're kind of just like, bam, right there in your face. How you doing? My name Tammy Tammy Trail. I'm a songwriter. I got this dope record I think you should check out. Um, or I found out you're a dope artist in my city. And I haven't met you yet, but I would love to. Can I DM you my song? Or can I, you know, can I send you an email with some records uh, that I think, you know, you may like or may fit you? That is the power of the internet. It has just brought us that much closer. However, if you are not in a city where songwriting is actually being cultivated and there are not a lot of producers for you to actually collaborate, songwriters to collaborate with, it will be hard to really, really get developed and get a sound. And I think that's very important. Um, you know, I got a chance to really, really be under some great producers uh, coming up in the business. And it really, really allowed me to, for one, be a student. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, um, even though I'm not an actual composer, I learned a lot about different key changes and, and how to follow melodies and how to build songs from scratch, just literally with nothing but a drum and my voice. Um, and, you know, I learned about structure. I just learned about so much because I was in an environment where that was cultivated and being signed with the major publisher, you then become exposed to even more talent, incredible talent that can teach you. And so that really, really helped um, to me, I believe, with the development and my success. All right. Next question. Indigo Color Soul. If you're just a writer, not singer, trying to break through, should you hire a song plug rather than a manager? Do you need an agent? 
Uh, they kind of like hand in hand. I mean, if you're going to have somebody shopping your material all the time as a song plugger, that's kind of like an agent. It's kind of like a booking agent. Um, but you just need to be clear about what the expectations are on his end as well as which, what, what his expectations are from your end. Um, and then I also think he needs to be somebody who's well connected and have relationships because, you know, you have sometimes people are, are just aggressive and their aggression and their personality can really get them through the door. You have some people who have the gift of gab and you just can't even explain how they end up meeting this particular person. But at the same time, I think it's important for, for you to know or be aligned with someone who has great relationships. Um, and even if it's not great relationships with the exact people that you're looking for, but they at least know how to penetrate circles. That's important. They know how to work a room. They know how to work. If y'all at a conference or if y'all are, you know, out of town, um, at an event and, and, and they have a great way of really approaching people, uh, or they know how to handle phone calls well. You know, and just like I said, penetrate circles, just really know how to work themselves into a room to get to contacts. I think that's very important to have when you're trying to sh have someone who shops records. Um, they also need to know music. They also need to have relationships with people who know what they're looking for so that they they know what to come and bring you and say, hey, this is an opportunity that we're looking for, that they're looking for. This is what I need, you know, and then you need someone who's brutally honest as well. Um, who doesn't take it personal and you can't take it personal because none of this is personal. Stop. Unless they're disrespecting you, nothing is personal. It's just business. So I think um, it's imperative that you consider those things when you're looking for someone to shop your records or book or, you know, uh, manage your catalog that you're developing. I need your help, sis. Hey, what's up, Jones? All right, let me see. Ayanna Mac, yay, pay me my money. What song was it? Oh, <laughs> it was called uh, What You Looking At by Whitney Houston. It was on the Just Whitney album. It went platinum. Um, Don't forget to check your message. I won't. I'm thinking of moving to Atlanta from Detroit to pursue professional songwriting, but I feel like I don't have the access here in Detroit. Hey, that's a decision you'll have to make, honey. Everybody coming to Atlanta. We, we, we full. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm not from Atlanta. I don't think I have the right to say that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, everybody is moving to Atlanta by the droves. And um, yeah, it's just a great place to be. I love Atlanta. I think it's a perfect blend of the both of both worlds. And um, it was one of, to me, one of my best decisions that I made. So I love being here. Um, what's the most effective way to copyright beats? This question is from Reasons To Be Great. Y'all coming with the questions today. That's what I'm talking about. Give y'all a hand for being prepared. Okay. ATL in Nashville. Okay. Okay. E. Okay. I, I've been to Nashville a couple of times. You know, it just depends on the type of writing that you're trying to do. But, you know, if you're trying to do country. I do got to. I have one country placement, though. But it did. And the writers are in Nashville. But I wrote it in L.A. Big John had, had a session for us. And I wrote the song in L.A. like four or five years ago and it ended up making their album two years ago real crazy how it happened but that's what happened um let's see okay so the question that the guy was asking about copywriting producer beats i would say this um the library of congress has a way to copyright songs um in volumes and i, I was talking about this on my on the last live i think that is the best way to do it and I would say maybe do it quarterly. That way you can actually do them in volume form of songs that you know you're actively shopping. Um, the reason why I say that is because it's $65 now per registration. So imagine if you have 10 beats that you need to register, you're gonna have to pay $650. So I think, you know, you may wanna do it wisely and just go ahead and file um a, in, in a volume form that way it makes sense because it just wouldn't make sense to to do that every time you're about to shop a record so you can go on library of congress um at copyright.gov and get all the information on that or you can follow us at the mezzo agency we'll help you with copywriting as well all right had to do that plug okay so i got one minute remaining 
Okay. The R&B artist who featured on my hook did not write the hook. She only sung on the hook. She don't need a split sheet. The split sheet is for writers and producers, people who have actually contributed to the work. So you're good on that point. I, I think definitely if she wants to get paid sound recording royalties, if you're going to sign up with Sound Exchange, if you're going to actually put a marketing campaign behind your project, then, um, you know, she could be entitled to a royalty, but you don't necessarily have to give it to her. And if you can't talk to her, you can't get in touch with her, then it's possible she don't want to be involved. I DM you E. Um, can you make a six-figure income off a of songwriting alone? Who this day and age, it is possible, but you definitely need to have a strong, powerful team behind you. Um, I'm going to wrap up on that note. Y'all, please, please, please make sure you follow me. Join the Writer's Block VIP for like all exclusives. Um, uh, click the link in my bio to, uh, to, to join. Definitely follow me on uh, YouTube. And um, also... Uh, if there are any other questions, I'll be back next next Friday, but I'm going to post next Wednesday the graphic and then you can just add your questions on there and I'll answer those questions first. All right. So I love y'all. Please be safe. Love and light to you. Please, please, please make sure y'all protect your family. Stay safe. And um, I will be back next week. So I appreciate your support and I will see you then. All right. Bye. Love y'all. Mm -hmm.